Lots 81, 82, and 83 from Beeman Showstock. Uh, lots 81 is going to be a Berkshire gilt. Uh, that is a January offering and one of the few Januaries uh, we've seen out. Uh, pedigree reads Otter's Pocket. Keep the change. Uh, lot 82 is a crossbred Barra. Uh, ear notch 13-1. He's a Prince Charming. I don't have a keynote on the bottom side, uh, but he is a Prince Charming Barra. Uh, and then the, the predominantly white gilt uh, is a purebred influence. That's lot 83. Uh, epic, why not us? And I'll start out by talking about uh, the 25 litter. Uh, that was a plan at home, uh, that white gilt. Uh, and I've actually had a couple people call me about this pig. If you're shopping into the influence deal, uh, that pedigree made a lot of sense. Uh, I know that why not us sell, sell real well uh, there at Dad and Ethan's place. And, you know, that epic boar was probably just as stout and as burly a one as you were going to find. And honestly, uh, that, that pedigree made sense to go ahead and make one of those influences. I know they sold some litter mates online this last week uh, that sold real well. And if you like, them just extra stout featured and big ribbed uh, that is going to be one of the stoutest influence gilts you're probably going to find anywhere in the country I've seen a lot of those things and looks like uh, it makes sense uh, the belted barra you know Prince Charming and I don't know what the south side is on the bottom but uh, he looks like the Prince Charming tab and honestly he's probably uh, just a little denser skeleton and a little bigger muscle than some of the Prince hogs uh, in terms of height and shoulder and just design though uh, kind of fits the bill with what you'd expect and those things have sold well they've been very well received uh, lots of presence and Ben, but that one there comes uh, just a shot stouter in terms of his arm and muscularity. Uh, obviously, the Beeman firm needs no introduction to the Berkshire ring, and that one, uh, to me, looks like she's still on her way up. A uh, neat one just maturity-wise. Got lots of hair and lots of presence. Uh, honestly, I would expect with that pedigree, and I don't know uh, which keep the change sound that that one's out of, uh, but that pedigree in terms of just making off-type Berkshires, in terms of just head and neck set, uh, designed from the side and having some extras just in terms of pigment, uh, in terms of hair and quality, uh, Beeman's look like they brought a very good set out uh, for the connection. Yeah, I think uh, I think you explained them extremely good, Isaac. I, the the thing that that sticks out to me is the the little Berkshire gilt. That thing's young and very immature. But I, I think when you study her, I, I think that gilt is one that has got some some very very good pieces and very unique in terms of her build. And regardless of where she ends up in the sale, I think whoever gets that thing 30 days from now is probably going to look pretty sharp as long as everything stays healthy because if you've studied what those boys have shown and what they've built a lot of times they'll start with the skinny green one that's good build and everything else is kind of laid back in there on the foundation on the back side and i think that's the the thing about that guilt that's extremely unique to me is while she is so green and immature you watch that thing go away and she packs a big punch her pin sets wide she ties good in terms of her her crotch but her hock sets extremely square and she sets down on the sole of her foot extremely good i think that's a very very neat guilt that somebody will be really happy that they've got here in another three or four weeks